honestly I still haven't even found a way to introduce this thing I just start <laughs> it's just into me not even a hi my even name high. is yeah exactly <laughs> Welcome to a new episode of the Common Room. Today's show, we have Aisha, who is a PhD student. Yes, I am. I find Soon to be a PhD doctor, student. isn't it? Soon to be. Soon to be. No, you're GP though. Don't, Not a GP. Don't go to no. broken legs and that, and she can't fix. <laughs> it. But other stuff, right? PhD, doctor of philosophy, by definition. But yeah, I mean, research. she's got the smart equals basically. Let's crack on. So, what do you do on a daily basis? So. The good thing about what I do is every day is very different. Mm. But essentially, my main work is research. That means that I'm in the lab pretty much all day. So when I'm in the lab, I do experiments. And with these experiments, I'm looking at trying to find a better way to deliver medicines to the lungs. Uh, so that's your primary research, essentially? That is essentially my primary research. Mm -hmm. And then it branches off into all different things that I've been doing. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I've done some work with tuberculosis. Yeah, yeah. yeah, very big disease. It's not very big in this country, but globally, like one and a half million people die from it every year. The trouble isn't that we don't have medicines for it. We mm -hmm. do. But do you know what resistance is? When the antibiotics, which is what we use to treat TB, doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a big issue. So we have new um, people like chemists all around the world, particularly in Germany and things, they develop like new new drugs that are for TB, but the trouble is we can't get them into our body. So people like that would come to us and say, listen, you're, you're you know, specialists for delivering things to the lung, you know, and we have these drugs. Do you think that we could work together and try and come up with something that would help them get to the lung? So your transport is a, a, a correct and safe mode of transport of the medication into yes, our bodies? Yes, into our bodies in a oh, safe oh. way and in a way that actually works. Yeah. Ah. So that, and we're talking about stuff that's on a very small scale, right? We're not just talking about knee, oh, needles, obviously, that, that's part of it, but we're talking a lot more detail to that, right? Yeah. Molecular level stuff? Right? Yeah, of course. So, yeah, we're looking at the drug itself. Mm. So, in the lab, that's exactly it. It's very small scale. Just It's like proof of concept to see if it works. We're not going anywhere near people, we're not mm. going anywhere near animals right now. We would, the next step. But for now, we just want to see whether these things work, and that's what I do. Early so, stages. Early stages. So yeah. obviously you mentioned animal testing, essentially. Yes. Is it as brutal as we've been shown the images online with Peter and with these guys, or is it something <sighs> a bit more, less severe? To be honest, like with animal testing, I think everyone agrees that you want to limit it as much as you can. Mm -hmm. No one wants to test on animals, but sometimes, unfortunately, you have to. Mm -hmm. There are other models that are out there, you know, that are not animals, but they're just not as advanced, and they're not the same as using on animals. And what people tend to forget, or they don't know, is that the animals that are used for research, they're bred specifically for research. Okay, so they have technically have no other purpose in life. Yeah, they're um, and they're, I know it sounds really bad, but yeah. they're kept pretty well. But I know it's awful that they, they do get they tested on. They're kept really well, like okay. they're, they've, they've got a good place to live, they've got, they get food, they get fed, everything, they're kept really, really well. Netflix? But, <laughs> do they have Netflix? Yeah. Imagine, <laughs> like a hundred mice. Imagine you look at the expenses. Food, All of them what? watching Stranger Things. <laughs> Who's got Netflix on? <laughs> <laughs> Who's using my account? <laughs> But little do they know, tomorrow they get in the car. <laughs> what forms of uh, medication delivery are available now? Um, for my field? Yeah, yeah for, your for field, delivery yeah. to lungs. Delivery process, yeah. um, you know about inhalers? Oh yeah, yeah. So Asthma, similar yeah, kind of yeah. concept. Yeah. So there's loads of different types of inhalers out there. Um, I can briefly tell you about some of the cool ones. Um, you know, you've cool. seen the normal, you've seen the normal like blue inhaler and the brown inhaler. L-shaped kind of thing. Yeah, the really? L-shaped ones. Yeah, so they're called metered dose inhalers mm -hmm. yeah I, I don't need to go into what that is but that's that's what they are the trouble with those is you have to think about timing you know you have to time when you press it okay. and then when you breathe in right okay have you seen those like tube things that go with the inhalers for little kids they're called spacers oh i think we we're talking about yeah 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 so those they, they help kids so what you do is you spray the inhaler into this tube thing and then they breathe it in oh okay so it takes away the thing it takes about... away the timing oh, issue cool. yeah so, that's, so that's, they do it in their own time, they breathe yeah. when they need to. Yeah, exactly. And it's not just for kids, it's for people who just have issues with coordinating. Was that um, COPD or what kind of thing? Does that come into... Do you use that as well? 
um, you can do. COPD um, is generally in people who have smoked for most of their life. It's very rare that you would find COPD in a person who hasn't smoked. So you're not going to find like children with COPD. They have different kinds of there's different kinds of inhalers and different kinds of medicines for them. You get really cool devices. There's one that looks kind of like a poker ball and it's got blisters inside. And these ones have like powder in each of the blisters. I think I've seen those, yeah. Yeah, it's really cool because some of my work also involves making these powders. Okay. Um so I've actually seen like how you would make the powders and then how you would load them into the blisters and then put them into the device and then actually use them. It's it's pretty cool. I've but seen the whole process and it's does it still require the timing or is it just no, pull no, when you need you to? Just, you just load it up mm. into the mouthpiece. Whenever you're ready, you breathe it in. I think we're doing it. It's like a circular thing, isn't it? Looks it looks like, like a disc. disc. Yeah, yeah, like a spaceship. It, 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 spaceship. Yeah, yeah. Someone used to have it. Whoever it is, yeah. But I, I don't know what you're talking about. I've seen those lying around somewhere. Yeah, it's a pretty cool one. That's really cool. And then you get ones that are really easy to use where you just twist it to one side, twist mm. it to the other side, breathe in and you're done. With those ones, the ones that you mentioned, so you have the uh, meter dosage ones, the little L-shaped one, and the disc. What are the cons of those things? So clearly, you see, like you mentioned, not everything gets through. Um, so what would be a negative effect so, of those? Um, I've already told you about the timing issue with yeah. the first ones. Um, with the other ones, where timing is not an issue, some of the downside is you know how they can be very fiddly. Mm -hmm. You've got to pull this lever, you've got to turn this around. Oh. If you think about the type of people that have COPD, they're elderly, mm -hmm. they have dexterity issues. That means that they will tend to have arthritis or something uh, like that. Difficulty. Yeah, they have difficulty doing all these movements. Twisting is, can be particularly difficult. So that's one of the downsides of those. Uh. Yeah. Well, so you got to find a different device, essentially, that's a lot more simplified. A lot less effort, essentially, yeah, isn't it? Just yeah, they them. have simpler devices, but some of them aren't, so... Really? You have know. to think about these things, yeah. That's true. Okay, how can you improve? So, uh, why, what, what's in development right now? In a sense, uh, yo, no, this, this might be a good way around this issue. This is what I do. I look at the formulation. By mm. that, I mean not the device itself, not yeah. the inhaler, but what goes inside it. So, I'm looking at ways that you can get more drug Mm. By drug, I mean the actual medicine in that formulation into your lung to where it needs to go, right? Oh. So what I so the do, efficacy of the whole yeah thing. exactly. So I look at nanoparticles. Mm. Do you know what nanoparticles are? Literally really small, small particles. Small particles, that's yeah, true. <laughs> literally really small particles. But they've been shown um, when you put drugs inside these really small particles, then you make them into a powder, which mm. is what I do. Then you deliver them to the lung. They've been shown to get deeper into the lung. With that, nanoparticles. With nanoparticles. And oh. they stick around for a little while longer. Retention time is... Retention time is increased. I still remember the TB one where it's, it's more in moist conditions, in small yes. cramped conditions. That's why it's more in the developing world you find it. It's not a matter of, of one or two particles of TB won't do much, but is it? When it builds up, it starts to have an effect on the lungs. TB is more, yeah, third world issue. Yeah. It's really, really that, awful. A lot of people die from it. It's, mm. I, I, the condition itself, if... A patient, for example, who has TB, responds very well mm. to the medication. Then they will, they will, they they'll probably recover right? oh, if if they're in good condition. If you know they're in a well developed right country, everything's right for them. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of people just don't respond to these drugs, and that's why they die. Um, in terms of the safety of the the delivery of the drug, how is that measured, and how is that sort of taken into account? Okay, that's a really good question. So with my work, my nanoparticles are made of something um, that is a protein. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We're made of protein, right? Oh, so it recognises so, it. So our body recognises it. Yeah, that's the theory. That's why we were interested in pursuing this particular protein, because we have it in our bodies. Mm -hmm. Do you know what albumin is? It's something that we have in our blood. Yeah. Uh, well, again, biology coming back. So you have the hemoglobin. Yes, it's, it's a plasma protein. The, yeah. Is it part of the hemoglobin or is it something no, that works with it? Yes, it carries things around with the blood. It. One in four children believe potatoes grow on trees. One in five children believe fish fingers are made from chicken. And one in eight adults believe the moon landings didn't happen. People believe all sorts of strange things. Some people believe that insurance companies try to avoid paying claims. But last year, Zurich paid 99% of insurance claims made by their UK customers. Zurich, an insurance company you can believe in. To find out more, visit zurich.co.uk slash 99. Oh, speaking of conferences. Mm. So that's part of what I do as well. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Carry on. Do you want to hear about that? That's actually the really cool thing oh, about okay. doing a PhD and being in research in general. Sh 
the really good thing about doing a PhD or being in research is you get to travel. Conferences, meetings, wherever, all around the world, you find um, where your your like people from your research area are meeting. Mm-hmm. So they call them meetings or conferences or whatever. And then you get to go and you share your research and you talk to these people and it's 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 really, really good. So I've been to there's a conference in Edinburgh that I go to every year, which is probably like the daddy of the conferences for people in my field. But I've also been to Germany and I've been to Portugal as well, where there have been conferences there. So yeah, everywhere. You could Huge go everywhere. Plus. Yeah. There's plenty of conferences in America as well that people go to, even South America. People have been to places like Brazil. There's it's one incredible. In, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's one of the great things about doing a PhD. You just get taken everywhere. Not just for conferences, you can also, if you're doing collaborations with people like I do, you get to go and work with them in their labs. So I work with um, a company and that's the company where Un- I do Unnamed for the, copyright purposes. All unnamed, that. unnamed, <laughs> <laughs> just in case. A confidentiality in that. <laughs> it's actually McDonald's. It's, it's, it's yeah, really McDonald's, McDonald's yeah. McDonald's, I, 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 McFlurry machine, you know, that's why it yeah. doesn't work. I keep yeah. breaking it. Yeah. Yeah, sure, man. They need to know. They need to know. Expose, man. Expose. (laughs) Confidentiality. What actually? What actually got you into the PhD? So how did it actually come about? The opportunity. How did it come about? Um. So my undergraduate degree, I did a pharmacy degree, as you know. Mm -hmm. So I became a pharmacist. In my final year, I did a research project that was based in a lab. It was also with nanoparticles, but a different kind. Yeah. But still for delivery to the lungs. Right. And that sparked the little the little interest in, in research because I loved it. I loved being able to go in the lab, do my own thing. You know when you have kind of, an, not an identity crisis, but you kind of feel like something's missing, something's mm. lacking. So, I get that. Yeah, I mean, you understand? Mm. So um, I'm working in a pharmacy and I love it. I still love it. But um, there was part of me that was thinking this can't be it. Like I have so much more like to give, I have something, I have, there's, there's so much more that I could probably do. Potential, you knew that it was yeah. more. Yeah, and I think I just got really lucky. I was just looking online, went on the King's website, um, which is where, where I did my degree, mm. and um, I saw a thing on the side and I saw, a pro- they have a list of projects. The situation has changed now because unfortunately there's just no money for mm. funding and things, but back then there was funding for PhDs. And I saw this thing and I was like, you know, this, this, this is for me, this looks ideal. And it was about nanoparticles, and I saw it, and I thought, you know, this looks really good. Let me just, you know, why not? Let me just apply. Take a chance. Take a chance. I mean, about thousands of people. I'm not exaggerating. Thousands of people apply for PhDs, so it's very rare. Is this from around the world as well? People yes. apply for these people. Well. Um, well, some PhDs. I don't know how it is now, but when I was applying four years ago, um, the the funding was mostly for British and EU. EU. Okay. So people in Europe, you do people, get yeah. worldwide ones, but it's rare, and they're normally in collaboration. So yeah. our government and their country's government will have an agreement where they fund so it. So governments that come together, essentially. Yes, yes. That's pretty um, cool. I can tell you about that as well. We have students from all around the world. Just in my group, there's people from everywhere. We're talking about every continent. We've got like Poland. We've got um, Spain. We've got Italy. We've got Malaysia. We've got Japan, we've got um, Thailand, um, Portugal, um, <laughs> British, I guess, like me. Um, ev- everything, oh, wow. everything. There's all the countries you can think of. Oh, cool. Um, Iraq, Dubai, places like that. It's just everywhere. And obviously you guys are all coming together for that, for, for a shared common goal, essentially, isn't it? Um, um, everyone does their research. Some of our research overlaps, yeah. Mm. And some, some is very different. So we've got people who do um, research on skin, skin delivery. So like creams and things like that. Ah, so okay. I'm lungs, but then there'll be skin, yeah. But then some of your work would always yeah, be like, and some or people, what works, what doesn't work, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, exactly. And there's a, there's a group that works um, predominantly on um, animals in lung. So platelets, do you know what platelets are? Uh, they're the part of plasma, isn't it? Yes, Where they're they in our blood, yeah. They're the things that are involved healing, in clotting. Yeah, yeah. Healing, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, wow. yeah, exactly. Damn. Yeah, there's a group that works um, primarily on that kind of work. Oh. And they do really cool stuff as well. But essentially, if you're into research, which is what I was, and I felt like I took a chance, mm-hmm. I applied for this, and I managed to get it somehow. And it would have been stupid of me not to take, not it, to take it up. Yeah. So that's how I ended up here. That's pretty cool. Yeah. On a chance, look at that. Uh, what do you think about the female male representation um, within your field? 
Um, in academia, by academia I mean in universities and things like that, as far as I can tell it's pretty much 50-50. Oh. You will see an equal amount of men and an equal amount of women. However, when you go and take this to a larger scale, by a larger scale I mean when I go to conferences and things like that, predominantly white males. And I'm, I'm not exaggerating, this is a fact, it's predominantly white males, mm -hmm. white male dominated environment. Which is surprising considering the people that are actually doing the work are all um, a mixture of people. But for some reason the people on the podium who are talking about it tend to be just white males. Uh -huh. Yeah. This is a reflection of what it is with it. most of the other industries around the world as well. We're, be it outside of science and things like that as well. I feel um, like, yeah, this is a global issue. It's just an issue that everyone has. Maybe not for everyone or maybe not. Maybe in some companies or whatever, it's not as distinct. Yeah. But I think generally, I think it's fair for me to say that, yeah, white males tend to get most of the representation. In academia, though, it's not an issue. Um, like I told you, there's people from everywhere, all yeah. around the world. We all, we're all different and it's never an issue. I don't think anyone really sees colour or your gender or anything. I was just going to say the race thing, that, 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 that's quite it's Irrelevant equal, in academia, but I, I feel like in industry, um, in a more you know, work environment, if yeah. that makes sense, um, it might be more of an issue. So are you going from, so there's lab work, but you're mostly involved in research, mm -hmm. essentially. Yes. And then you have the upper level, like office work, um, paperwork, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, people. More CEO type kind of stuff. More senior people, yes, exactly. Academia, again, is, it's normally not an issue. Like there's, I know professors who are very young, they're female, they're not even British. They're from, they're, they're women of colour and they're professors, you know. It's incredible. Which is incredible. We, these women are like my role models. So they exist, they're there. But I just feel that like globally, yeah, more can be done exactly. to make it more equal for everyone. We'll get there. We will get there. Um, yeah, next thing we move on to is um, any advice, any pros, cons that um, there are working or getting involved in the research field that you meant that you're in right now? It depends who I'm talking to. If you are at uni and you're an undergraduate and you're thinking about what to do next, mm -hmm. you know, you want to do a master's or you want to do a PhD like me, um, Think about your passions. Like if you if you are if you have a genuine interest like I did, it's always worth it. Always go for it. Um, if you're a creative person as well, it's always good for you. But to be honest, there's so many different personality types, and they all excel. So it doesn't matter who you are. If you just are genuinely into it, go for it. It's always worth it. It's difficult though. If you think about it, PhD is the highest degree you can get. It is insanely difficult. Okay, for every high you have lows, but that's life. That's okay. just life. You will ride. You will ride with it, and you will get through it. Mm. Um, but if you do get the opportunity, yeah, a thousand percent, go for it. Because especially if if you really really want to, mm. research is very diverse. If you want something, oh oh, but if you don't get paid a lot, so if you're money driven, it might not be the best thing for you. If you have a family to provide for, I don't know, a mortgage, a, yeah. a car to yeah. pay for, I don't know. Growing us adult co commitments there. I don't know, like, I don't know, Netflix account. I don't, I don't know what, what the kids, you know, pay for these days, but if you have fidget a lot spinners. of fidget spinners, <laughs> you know, if, if you have um, big financial commitments, um, that's one thing that might bring you back, the that might make slightly. you reconsider. Mm. Um, but again, take 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 it as case case by case basis. But yeah, generally, PhD is for people who have a genuine interest in research, and if you do, then the rest will follow, because it, the experiences that I've had mm. are everything. I've experienced every emotion. Like there have been days where I've just wanted to break down and be like, "Nah, this is it. I'm done with this." And then there have been other days where I've been so elated and so happy with everything. So. It's, so it's, it's, it's a huge fluctuation. It's a huge fluctuation. The rewards massively outweigh the tour. It has been very enriching, this experience. I don't think the things that I've gained and the way I've grown as a person, this would not have happened if I had not done a PhD. Yeah. You mentioned the P how you got into a PhD, was literally mm -hmm. just going on the King's website and looking at some of the links on the site. Obviously, that's something that you've gone out of your way to have a look at, essentially. Yes. But is it... it is it as easy as someone will come to you, not just give it to you in a plate, but be like, yo, like, this, is what, this is what's happening with PhD. Um, is it that accessible and is it that publicised, essentially? I, I don't think it is as publicised as it should be. I think most students go to uni and think they have to get a job after. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So not, not many people are aware um, that you can actually get involved in this and there might be funding out there for you. 
so it is like a job but then you're also studying and you're contributing to the world of research as well so yeah not that many people know about it I, I only found out about that you can do a PhD in my subject only like a year after working so I was like oh man that's a bit it's not late I still don't feel, believe it's late but I was like oh well that's I didn't know you could do that like you know when you hear about classmates who've gone on and they're doing X, Y, Z I was like oh well so the so and so is actually still at uni but they're not actually studying they're actually giving lectures on this subject that we did and things like that yeah I think um, it depends on the university as well mm. um, at my university they did have a session where they talked about postgraduate study mm. and they did tell us oh about like thousands of people apply so the chances are very slim <laughs> so that kind of put me off and I was like oh forget it you know I'm yeah. just going to focus on my pharmacy career what's for competing with so much Mm. But everyone's had everyone's um, application process has been um, quite different. So some people like me, I think I got quite lucky. I got ha my application just happened to catch my supervisor's eye, and they wanted to speak to me. Um, and then my interview was it wasn't as formal. I don't think. I think it was it was just like a chat. But we were on the same page. We were all on the same page, and everything just naturally flowed. And I think that's why Clicked. we knew that this was a good match. Other people have to go through very intensive processes where they have to review a paper, they have to write an essay or something, they have to give a presentation, you know. Some people have to go through very, very intensive process. So mm -hmm. it depends on the group you're joining. By group, I mean your research group. You will always have a research group, you're never on your own. I was going to say, oh, that's the next question actually. Mm -hmm. um, how much independence, how much group work is involved, how much are you given support of, things like that? Your project is your project. Mm -hmm. your, your PhD is your PhD. That is absolutely 100% yours. Your responsibility. Your responsibility. Yeah. You can steer it whatever direction you have. You have your supervisors who are there to help you, to guide you. Particularly in the early stages. They will help you because they will have an idea. Eventually you're going to take charge, you're going to take the reins and you're going to say, I want to do this and I want to do that. And you're just going to get on with it. Mm. Your PhD is yours, but within your research group, you will have other students or other postdocs. By postdoc, I mean someone who's already done their PhD and they're doing like their own research. It's like an advanced, I literally postdoctorate. Literally, yeah? Yeah. Um, they will do things that are similar to your work. They would have done things, experiments, techniques that are similar to what you would do, so you can ask them for help. They're there for you. Like People in your yeah. group will always be able to help you. Yeah. Uh, so what's the likelihood of you doing something new? For example, I'm guessing PhDs and doctorates, they've been happening for maybe decades and decades. Um, what's the likelihood of, of your research being that little bit different? All PhDs are an original piece of work. Everyone, what, what, what one PhD student does to one from the year before, it will be in advance. So it's like an addition. Ah. All PhDs are unique. They're all original pieces of work. There is a sense of team effort behind it. Of course, of course, mm. yeah. No. Um, I, I, I guess um, for me I'm only speaking from my experience mm. and my institution of course yeah, everyone would have had I don't know I can't speak for other institutions and mm. other people but generally I would have to say my experiences in doing a PhD it's been the hardest thing of my life mm. by far it's the hardest thing I've ever done work wise but worth it and very enriching inshallah you obviously achieve the PhD the doctor at the end of it <laughs> inshallah, inshallah. Um, what happens after that make doors everyone, make doors, everyone. Um, right now, I'm just focused on getting here. Fair enough. Yeah. I just want to get it. Um, well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be honest, I don't know. I like doing loads of different things. Mm. So I want to keep. I want to keep the pharmacist thing going. Okay. But then I, I also want to stay a little bit in research. Mm. Then uh, I don't know. I fingers, think. Fingers I think. I think, in, I think industry really suits me as well. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, thank you for Aish for coming down. She's probably most our most intelligent person here. So uh, we've had on the show. Um, yeah, thank you so much for coming in. Um, thank you for having me. I look me. forward to inviting you back on again. After inshallah, you become a proper doctor, doctor, and then um, make my parents proud. Exactly. And your